Hello, we have a foxy game where uh, black won by resignation. It seems that white realized after pushing at h5 that there's nothing to do because black can just push through and go up. So he played the last move and immediately resigned. Anyway, let's go back to the beginning and see what happened. So we have a star point followed by a sun sun against a komoko and a star point. So black plays the low approach, which is very common, and white goes for a two space jump on the side. Usually here white plays a Kosumi or a Keima. Now when white plays the third line move, uh, black can consider Tenuki, so a move like F3 for example it's an option or go directly Sansan. But luckily in the actual game black just played the two space jump to make a base. Now when this happens white can kick, black goes up and then we have an over concentrated formation here because the extension is two space uh, across. So Normally, if we consider this variation where white plays a kick right away and black goes up and then white plays a one space jump or a two space jump in this case because we have this R7, the original move, which is also playable, uh, black will always extend three space along. When there is space to extend for a base like this, which is ideal, black will always choose the three space instead of the two space extension. So now, for black to, to try to punish white a little bit or to get a a slightly better uh, follow-up locally, black should consider the q6 shoulder hit. So in this case you don't play the shoulder hit at q5 because white already has the stone at r7. This is the kind of move you play when white has no stone in the uh, in the local area. So if white plays away then you immediately put pressure with q5 and then no b to stay ahead. So back to the original game. We have a two space jump therefore black can consider q6 in which case white usually connects, this is normal for white to keep the stones connected on the side, then black will play r3 attach, white hane, black goes q4, and here most of the time white will just connect r5. Now black can leave the position like this and extend on the bottom at f3, then extend back to set up a moyo, and every time white goes atari r2, black will block with a co fight. So like this, instead of uh, connecting heavy with a farmer set formation. Another option locally is to simply go down to R2 or just extend around L4, uh, sorry, L3. <coughs> so extend further from the original Kakari, which is P3. So this is actually a pretty good Joseki to remember, and it's an old fashioned one. So when black plays uh, M3, white can kick right away, and this will result in a very, uh, in a pretty cramped shape for black. But white played away. This R14 is big too. But in fact for white it's interesting to attack the top left, something like d14 and then extend back to c10. Or put pressure right away at d16 and then we have other josekis. This would be a joseki to go for outside thickness for white. So white plays r14, well going for uh, the right side when uh, r7 is in place it also makes sense. Black slides, uh, I mean defense, white slides, black protects the corner and white pushes in the corner. Uh, this is a little bit early, this is the kind of move you play in the endgame and it's quite a large Yossi play, but right now why should consider to finish the Joseki on the right side. Now usually the way to finish the Joseki here is R11, but because most of the stones are on the uh, third line, the formation is pretty flat, so and there's still an evasion point at R9, therefore why should consider to step up to the fourth line at Q12, so he's trying to balance out the third and fourth uh, line moves. So. When something like this happens, let's say black approaches this corner and then extends back on the left side. And later on, if white gets another move around here, then he's going to set up a pretty nice territory on the right side. So white push at S17. Uh, this is a move that black can ignore completely. And black attach right away Q14. Uh, this attach is not necessary. Normally in the top, for black it's big to play something like L17. And on the right side, if uh, it's normal for white to get a move at Q12 or R11, black should consider R12, because this is a move trying to punish white for not taking the extension. So if white simply comes out between black stones, black has room to extend for a base. And in the end, you punish this S17, because S17 was supposed to be either R11 or Q12, so you get the moves on the right side. And now when white jumps out between the groups, white is just getting neutral points and in order for white to leave he will need a hane and a connection in the top right corner then black also has time to extend for a base. So it's more interesting to play a pincer at r12 than to play an attach. 
Because this attach, uh, I can simply Hane and then play a hanging connection or a double up like this. The idea of the double up is that when uh, black pushes here and white blocks, if black goes Atari, there is no way to go out. So white already anticipates this uh, push and cut and therefore the two stones are captured. So why simply Nobi? Then black push from behind. Uh, well, this gives black a little wall in the top, but let's see if uh, that will be sent there and also get the extension around uh, J16. So push, then white blocks in the head of two stones, that's fine. Push along, white plays a double honey. Uh, this is a bit too much. White can just nobi and leave it like this. White is already happy to build territory on the four line. So all these pushing from behind are not necessarily good for black. Because the, the group in the top is already safe enough for black. So it's more interesting in general to leave a gap between these two stones. We have this uh, space here where you can invade R12, R11, R10 or R9. <clears throat> or even just one move around Q11 and it's done. I mean, if black plays something like uh, this right now, it's going to be very difficult for white to uh, claim any territory in this area. So when white plays a move like Q11, black can play a shoulder hit or just leave it like this. For example, extending the top, now when white attacks again, black will bump and jump out. And it's already uh, separated. I mean, this territory on the right side for white is not going to be um, connected. <clears throat> so, back to the original game. Double Hane, then cut and extend. Oh, and Atari also. Ah, this Atari is actually good. Normally, after cut and uh, Atari, it's good for black to extend right away. Because white still needs to, to play something on the right side. Playing this extension will prepare the... Uh, it's going to set up a ladder at P10. So normally white will capture this stone. Then Atari from behind. White connects. And now black can play away. For example, something in the top or attack the lower left side. Because it's uh, the most open area to fight for. Uh, the thing with this Atari... It's also good actually because white still needs to go out. But this leaves white the option to play Atari from behind and then push through with Atari and keep going inside. So in the end, uh, black gets separated. So this can be a little more dangerous. I mean, when you play a move like this Atari, you should already consider that white has the option to play Atari from behind, sacrifice a stone, maybe even play one more Atari because he's not afraid of Ko. If black plays here, white will take the Ko and fight it. <clears throat> and this kind of ruins black shape and then Atari from behind to push through. So that's why it's a bit safer to go just Nobi. So Atari, white went out. White didn't want to give up the Ponuki. Then black connects and white defends. Uh, white doesn't need this move. On the right side, he's already okay. So black has a wall now. And this wall usually wants to extend around J16. Which means that for white, it's interesting to get inside the top around J17. Now, if white plays a move like this and black attacks from the left, white can extend towards the right. So black's wall is pretty much ruined. Now if black attacks from the right, white extends on the left, white makes a base. Black will also protect the corner, then white can grab a big point like this. So now if you look all over the board, um, white is grabbing the territory on the right side and the position is solid everywhere. So this should be okay for white, especially that white has Komi too. So playing this move, it's slack. And this one also leaves a gap at uh, Q8. So for white, if he really wants to, to play something on the right side, should be... Q9 or a jump at P8. <clears throat> so this will connect the border much better. But even if white doesn't play anything, so let's say white goes in the top and black comes in or black tries to save the, the stone. So for example, when black plays Q10, white will just Hane and after Atari and Atari, black is trapped inside. So there is no way for black to, to run out or escape from that stone. The most black can do is approach something like Q8, threatening that next black will connect the stone, then white will capture the stone, and black comes inside. But here white can fight. Push like this, then separate. So white shouldn't really worry. I mean, this fight can go well. Therefore, for, black, uh, for white was really slow to play a move like P9, which leaves the RG of Q8 for later, and black got a nice point in the top. So this way, black starts to be successful in the opening. <coughs> now white desperately comes in. Actually, in the top, it's more interesting to extend around uh, J16. Seems to be equal distance from the Sun Sun. 
I mean, trying to connect these stones. You have how many? One, two, three, four, five liberties to the left and four to the right. Actually, yeah, it's pretty much the same with the extension in the game. <clears throat> and actually, the extension being further away from the wall, it's even better. But with one, when white comes in, black should be very aggressive against this kind of invasion. So black played a double up, but here black can play a Kosumitsuke to put more pressure on the stone. Now when black comes out, continue with Keima and push these two heavy stones into black's wall. So this is going to be tough for white. White needs to play something like this, then Ane, now block, uh, answer all these Ataris. And it's not too easy for uh, white to make eye shape inside. But he might. Anyway, it's painful because black gets really strong on the outside and now it's easy to make more territory or set up a big moy on the left. Even if uh, white will damage some of the top side. So double up. <clears throat> well, this leaves the, the stones heavy and uh, thin too. It's a, it's a fine idea to play H17, but it's good to consider J17 as well. So now, one space jump. Uh, black can play a peep first to force white into heavy shape and instead of a one space jump should play Keima because Keima again will push the white group into the wall. Then Hane and Nobi and try to surround this group as much as possible. So one space jump uh, leaves white uh, a much easier way to escape to the center. So white jumps again. White can think about the Tsuke. White really needs to make some room. <clears throat> so when black plays a Hane, white pulls back, black will go down, white can turn, black will go up and then jump along. So already white set up a, a little eye shape in the top. If uh, black Hane under, white pulls back, black will go here, turn, connect and then again some jump towards the center. But already there is a little eye shape in the top. A tiny base. So let's see how white escapes. Peep, another peep. Mm, then white is giving up some stones here. Mm, that feels good for black. So white didn't want to connect heavily. But actually, if white connects again, black needs this kind of move. Then white can go out with a Kosumi or attach and Nobi. If black doesn't play L15 and tries this move, white can push through. Then it's actually difficult to take away the eye shape. White can uh, either go out or make some eyes inside, so keep everything connected. Well, white decided to give up a stone and that's a lot of territory for black in the top. And here black doesn't have to turn. Black can block at uh, M17. Now let's make a, a little reading exercise here. So if white plays Atari like this, black will connect, obviously. Then when white Atari from the right, black can go down. If white connects, black connects under. If white turns, black blocks and everything is fine. So the stones are captured in the top. Now, if white pushes through, instead of connecting, if white goes down, black has Atari here, then captures two stones, and therefore, black will make more territory in the top. Which means, playing the honey here, it's absolutely fine. Now, if white plays Atari from this side, then black connects. When white connects in the top, black cuts and captures three stones. If white connects here, black separates, and still keeps the whole top connected. White pushes, black blocks, cut, extend, or... Just fight, I mean, black can also resist here in the fight. But it's good enough to extend, give up a stone, then have sent it to build something else. Already, there's a lot of profit by capturing this guy in the top with all the surrounding territory in that area. So, back to the game. Ah, white connected. Black turns, white push, and black connects again. So this connection is not necessary. Right now, black can play again. If white pushes once, black blocks, and that's only one point. If white cuts here, uh, black can capture the stone. On this Atari take, on this Atari answer, Atari again connect. And we have the same thing. There are two cutting points. So when black, white connects one, black takes the other. Those points are interchangeable. And again, uh, black keeps the top side. So playing this move in the early stage of the game, it's uh, like saying pass. I mean, it only uh, blocks one point. So it's really slow. It's really important at this stage of the, the game to look all over the board and go for a big open space like this one or F3 or the Sun Sun. I mean, blocking here to make another point in Gote, it's really too slow. 
So white lived in Sente. Uh, white's approach is a bit too close because that formation in the top is ultra thick. So white should take um, an approach like this, which is much safer. If uh, black comes inside, there is room to extend for a base. And then black has to do the same. Make a base towards the corner. But playing like this, when uh, black plays a pincer, now it's difficult for DC15. If black defends the top, white can come back and get a base. But white decided to go up, and that was risky too. It's better to extend back. If black pushes here, extend again. If black captures one stone, no problem. Just sacrifice one stone and get another big point. So in the end, black really worked hard to capture one stone, which you can consider as bait. So... So when white push like this, uh, this is brave. I mean, white is probably expecting black to defend again, e16, and then white can extend three space, which is ideal. But of course, white being strong in the top will go for a pincer. That's well played. <clears throat> so white got a very heavy group. Uh, this move is not necessary. Black can take away the base by playing c13. So when white hane, black will block. If white no b, black connects. If white connects, black connects again. If white tries to hit, like uh, d17, black can connect here, or like this. This is a little bit dangerous actually. Oops, my bad. Just connect solidly. Then on this move, connect again, if Atari capture the stones. So the group is still under a lot of pressure. Actually, it's dying. So, <clears throat> back to the game. Black simply nobi, keeping the, the top safe. Well, probably black noticed there is some AG in that area, but not so much actually. Uh, black can fight. Position is still strong. So white slides. Now this approach, that's a good move. Kick is maybe questionable, it kind of helped black. Uh, this feels good, but black can play Kosumi, then a one space jump. Well, this is the right distance from C6, but having B12 in place, white can play the Kosumi Tsuke and Hane. So this happened in the game. Now, uh, black can also consider the attach. If white pulls back, black pulls back, and white still needs to leave. And it's quite painful again. White has to play like this, in, in fact. Then connect, and then make twice. So when black plays this kind of move, white can cut. But this will lose the top stones, and the other group is still on the run. Well, the only thing is that black has to run too. Okay, this might be a little more risky, so black has to choose a safer route, which is fine. C10, then Atari, extend, and extend again. Okay, this is safe because white is actually on the second line. But somehow, uh, black was supposed to gain a little more in that fight. Anyway, now white is center, and white should play something like K3. <clears throat> this move is not necessary, the group is already alive. So, black got center. Uh, for black it's also big to play something like uh, h3 and this will probably come later in the game and white was supposed to jump out so when white plays this move black defends and white attaches that's a bit too much uh, black should just no b there are several cutting points here so white needs to double up or push once and then black extends on the bottom side this way black keeps the stones connected playing the jump is too much probably uh, the reading went like Hane, then Wedge, Atari, Connect and Connect. Then even push here once in center and then extend. So black can keep everything connected, but white can fight back with this push. This is a good move for white. Then Atari and capture. So this punished uh, Q7, which was overstretched. And now white can double Atari and take the stone. Well, in the end black finished center here, so it's not that bad, but... White got to enclose that area and became very thick because if you look at this position earlier, black can always play Q8. Even after this uh, Q5 actually. When black plays Q8, it's not so easy for uh, white to block this. I mean, if white comes out, black will go out too. Then white has to uh, capture the stone in the net. Then black can separate. <clears throat> or if uh, white pushes here, black will come back and connect. And again, white needs this kind of move. This is a key point, the Q8, the uh, elephant eye, I mean, poking it out. So, uh, push through, separate, at least black got center, uh, capturing the core, 
and now black extends. This is the last large point on the board. Here white made a mistake. Well, white was still worried about the top group, but it's important to jump out here. This formation, when black invades the corner, white can resist and nothing happens. This will die. So white keeps the corner. And white actually lost that corner and also the game. So white defends the top, black comes in the corner. Now in order to be safe, uh, white should play d3 and allow the Hane, which uh, reduces some points in the corner. Then there are two options, block at b4, Atari from behind and Atari again. This will keep the corner safe. Of course black is center and can play some more moves to expand the center, but at least white has the territory on the side, territory on the left, corner is safe and a bunch, I mean a few stones in the top, middle top too. So overall the game can be still long, but white went down. Black plays this attach, but here white made another mistake. First of all, black doesn't have to play e4, it's better to play e2. Now if white goes if e3, black will pull back, white can cover, black will leave in the corner, then white will uh, connect under. But this is painful for white because white lost all the corner points for nothing, just to connect uh, on neutral points. So when uh, white plays here, black will always push uh, pull back in this case, because if black plays uh, f3, uh, white can block like this, then Hane, then protect again. And on the cut, simply go down and capture black in the corner. So black will pull back, then white turns or maybe plays a bump. But anyway, white needs to connect under eventually. So that's painful. Now, there's another way. When uh, black plays e2, white can try to resist f2. But the problem is black can push and cut. And now not having the stone at f5 makes a difference. If white plays here, here and connects, uh, black can go for a semi with the cornerstones. Let's see how this will end up. Seems quite dangerous for white. There are four liberties here. Oh, punk, punk. Turn, then connect, take away another liberty, connect, take away another liberty, Ane and Atari, and it's done. So white collapsed. Therefore, it's difficult for white to block at f2 when black can push and cut. Because now, if white tree decides to rescue the stones on the left, black will cut the bottom stones, and again, it's a disaster. So black played this move, and white blocks right away, but actually for white, it's better to play d3. Now, if uh, black pushes down and cuts at f2, white goes Atari, then Atari here capture, Atari here connect. Uh, if black connects like this, white can Atari first, then Han in the corner, and Han again. Now, if this happens, uh, black is losing the semi. Because white can make an eye in the corner and lots of liberties on the outside. So this will be a way for white to keep the corner. But white was brave. He blocked like this. Black cuts. Very good. Then Atari go out. This is all forced. White is trying to connect under but he missed the monkey jump. The right monkey jump here. It's a6. This will connect under but it also helps uh, black in the end. Because black can play all these uh, forcey moves. <clears throat> and then leave in the corner. So when black plays b2, this group is already alive. Now there is nothing to do to kill the corner anymore. But the way white played, this is not a, a good way to connect. I mean for white it's okay to connect b7, or to connect a6, or to connect a8. But either way, uh, black will leave in the corner. So black can push, push again, go Atari here, Atari like this, Atari like this. Also throw in once, it might be different uh, in the end game, and then leave in the corner with this move, or Hane and hanging connection. <clears throat> so white just got too ambitious, he failed to connect, because now, yeah, black can sacrifice one stone. So if white cuts, Atari from behind, and connect, and now the stones will die in the corner. Something similar happened to Atari, Atari again, and when white connects, everything is captured. So white tries to go out with these guys. Atari and nothing to do. I mean here normally white needs to connect. Or white should play Atari like this, then sacrifice. But it's a really difficult game. I mean this was supposed to be white corner and now it's all black and the white stones died inside. Ouch. So well done for black in the end. But very important to remember 
uh, in the beginning to play q6. I mean, in the Fuseki like this. So the combination q6, r3, and then q4. This is a good Joseki. That's something to remember for black. And in the lower left corner at the end, it's important for white to play <clears throat> uh, d3. And then the other option is to play c4 and cut one stone. Of course, black can play like this to take away the eye, but white can still jump in the center. And even if the group uh, gets around it somehow, uh, white can still make eyes locally with this kind of move. So there will be at least one eye here and one eye here. Instead of the variation in the game where everything collapsed. So well done on this win and better luck with the next dumb players on Foxy.